Oh my god, hi! <laughs> it's Corinne, and I have a video for you today. It's another styling video. This is going to be all about the Jacquemus 2023 Fall Winter Collection that came out a couple weeks ago. And I'm going to style three looks based on that collection. So here we go. So here's the thing. I would be lying if I said that I am a fan of the brand Jacquemus. I just have honestly never paid attention to the runway shows in the past couple years despite the insane excitement surrounding them. Obviously I know only kind of bits and pieces about their most popular products. So for example there was that draped dress that had like kind of a draped side skirt thing. I know that that runway show blew up and then I also know of that one bag that they produced that is I believe called the Chiquitita? Chiquitito? Let me look. Chiquito. Chiquito? <laughs> Chiquito bag? I always think of the Mamma Mia song. Anyway, so that's my like, or used to be my perception of Jacquemus is like these key items. And I think that's very foolish to do to um, distill a brand down to the things that the public is consuming rather than their message. So when this collection came out, took a look at it, didn't think about it for like a week. <laughs> and then I looked at it again and I was like, and then I kind of, you know, I went through it, I read the little blurb, and started to kind of put things together. When I found out it was set at the Versailles Palace, the way I panicked. I didn't know because it's, it's obviously the gardens surrounding the palace, so there's like this gorgeous tree line, grass, and then there's a red runway. And then there are little rowboats that kind of sit in the water and that's where the people who were watching the show were sat. This whole scene is obviously very stunning and they're known for these location runway shows. You know, just thinking about like the exclusivity of fashion, like this kind of stuff, although it is beautiful, actually kind of pisses me off because it's like just how many people have the luxury of like time, money, whatever other resources to like get themselves all the way to Versailles, book a hotel, whatever it is, just to stay there to watch this like 20 minute runway show happen at a palace. Like <laughs> that is insane. I digress. The point of this video isn't to criticize this collection and the fashion industry as a whole. The point of this video is rather to celebrate the brand and this collection. And so I guess I'm just going to talk about what I specifically like about this. I guess we'll start with the references. So one of the biggest references in this collection is to Marie Antoinette. She was a former resident of Versailles, perhaps the most famous former resident of Versailles. She was obviously known for her over-the-top fashions. And if you're going to showcase a collection at Versailles, you're going to need to reference her. It's just fact. On the more sort of ethereal women's wear end of things, namely in the starting few looks and the finale looks, historical garments called robe à la française or sack back gowns were referenced in both silhouette and in detail. So from these looks you can see square necklines which were typical of dresses worn in the 18th century as well as these strands of fabric hanging from the back neckline of these finale dresses. That combined with the exaggerated hip shapes of these looks, also referencing an 18th century undergarment called a pannier, combined to create a silhouette that was very reminiscent of Marie Antoinette. Each of these elements were interpreted. You can see that these garments were made with very light, very delicate fabric. 
instead of the heavy silk brocades and all of this kind of stuff that you would have typically seen of garments from the 1700s. They also created volume in the hips with bunches of fabric rather than cages, which is a fun ode to the shapes of this era. These garments are more modern and more subtle than the garments from the 18th century and I think that's where this collection really shines because there have been a lot of designers that have referenced historical fashion from this era to name a few Vivian Westwood, Christian Lacroix, but this is an incredible feat because it is so modern and the historical references are so subtle. I am intrigued by this show because any amount of reference to historical fashion brings me joy. But I guess you could argue that everything is a reference to historical fashion because everything comes from historical fashion because of the progression of clothing over time through the ages. So there's that, but I digress again. There's also some really fun, playful moments of tutus and more like structured skirts that I believe are references to the mini crinny by Vivian Westwood. Definitely, definitely. But when asked about the references for this, the designer said that one of his biggest reference points was actually Sex in the City. Carrie wore that iconic tutu look in the opening credits of the HBO series for every season, it makes a ton of sense why a designer would be influenced by that. I think what I like so much about the tutu stuff is that it is paired with menswear, mostly. There are some women's wear looks and those are fun, whatever, fine. But the menswear looks with the tutus and the like bunched up fabric, the sort of widening of the hips and the feminizing of the form, that is exciting to me. That is just chef's kiss. Another reference that is heavy in this collection is Lady Di, Princess Diana. The collection so clearly references a lot of looks that she was photographed in, so mainly her like all black revenge dress where she wore that gorgeous sapphire pearl necklace situation that was seen on this like rather funny kind of like little bubble look and then you can see it some more kind of playfulness in the jewelry after that which i'm not too sure what it's referencing but there's a lot of like cherry necklaces and earrings pops of red are big in this collection it's mostly black white and like little moments of red so very restricted color palette but i think it's successful so now that we've gone over the references Let's jump into the outfits. I'm really excited about these. There were two main looks from this collection that inspired this outfit. So the first one is this like all white head to toe menswear look. It's got the blazer, the tie, and some like bigger kind of baggier white trousers and this fun little penier moment all in white and then the model has this like gorgeous little slick tear which i also did in this look the second reference point is again an all white menswear look but the thing we're paying close attention to here is the gorgeous little flower i don't know if it's a brooch an accessory moment or if it comes with a blazer but it's there it's on the front and it's perfect. <laughs> I believe this look is one of their backless blazer moments, which has become kind of like a house code for them, I guess. People, I think, most know someone like Bad Bunny for wearing one of their looks on a red carpet. I don't obviously have a back cut out blazer, but this is the look that I made based on these outfits. So, first look. Head to toe, white, obviously, that's what this look is. I guess starting at the top, we have a button-up shirt, 
this linen cotton tie and this cutie little linen women's blazer thing that is actually made by Ralph Lauren and this is more of a sort of shrunken fit jacket it's not oversized like the second look that I'm referencing it's more similar to the first look which I think is great because it sort of opens up the attention to the stomach area. Now this I chose to go for more of like a classic sort of suiting moment and I took away the exciting penier effect and I actually used that in a different outfit so stay tuned for that reference. But this I was just taking the cues of like the all white menswear with kind of flowing linen-y cotton fabrics. I obviously did the little flower on the chest. I just think flowers on blazers are fun and theatrical and like romantic. And then these white heeled loafers that I have. And then this shirt happens to have these like giant crazy French cuff or double cuff kind of cuffs <laughs> and I just kind of let them roam free for again more of a theatrical look so this is the first look and I think this is great this is like I was wearing this on a 70 degree day and because all of it's linen and cotton I was not overheating it was warm wasn't insanely comfortable but I wasn't dying and I was like oh my god a white suit for summer how fun is that so this gave me kind of an idea to go in that direction in my everyday dressing. So the second ensemble also references menswear. This time it's referencing the all black menswear looks. This is a major reference point for the second outfit so I just want to point out a few key moments. So looking at the top of the ensemble we see a tie with some kind of jewelry, accessory, button-up shirt, blazer, the blazer has a off the shoulder moment. I can't quite tell if it's like completely detached as a sleeve or if it's kind of attached around the armpit, but it's got that scrunchy look, which is the name of the collection is Le Chouchou. That means scrunchy and it's an informal word that refers to anything that is scrunched. But anyway, this look specifically as well as many other looks reference that concept throughout. So we see that on one shoulder, we move down the look, high-waisted pants. The pants have like sort of a lower belt situation and then they kind of go out into a baggier silhouette. The second look is also an all black suiting look. This one just has a white shirt, no tie. And the main thing to point out here is this gorgeous little fabric flower that is either in a pocket as an accessory or is part of the blazer. I also believe that this is one of the jackets that they made that has a backless moment. So my interpretation of these looks is also an all black outfit. The main thing to kind of talk about, I guess, is the top half of the look, which has a flower which you can see it's just this like little beaded flower brooch that I have that's really sweet and a tie I actually have this leather tie that I love 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 but I thought the way that the leather kind of catches the light felt like a similar kind of effect to the Thai jewelry situation in the all black look. I threw on this amazing pair of earrings that I recently got. And then as we move down the look, I have this sort of bigger pair of linen all black trousers that I threw on with these little kitten heels that I love. I think kitten heels at the bottom of a menswear look especially are really fun, but kitten heels in general just are just they're just cute and I love that they're a trend this year this was a little warm for this day if I'm honest but this is a fall winter collection so just imagine these looks more in like October less in July you know what I mean the third and final look has references to three main looks in this collection so the first one and by far the biggest reference is to this black and white menswear look pictured here is a tight little suit jacket with a button-up white collared shirt a another puffy boxer short situation with a pair of low slung black trousers and they're sort of these little dots 
that are coming off the uh, suiting elements. So the jacket and the trousers, which are just like really fun and playful. I obviously don't have a suit like this, but it's a really fun look. And I think the model looks great with his slicked back hair. And I think the main thing that I took away from this was this section in the middle of the look. The second look that I'm referencing for this outfit is this red sweatered tutu look. I think again super playful. Don't love this red sweater. The shoulder strap is annoying to me to be honest but the tutu with the pants with the black trousers and the black dress shoes so cute. I think also tutus are a bit of a trend this season and so again we're just it's like a continuation of this like whole ballet ball <laughs> of this whole ballet core trajectory that's been happening for like a year I swear but again this look is great it looks great on this model as well and then the final look that I am gonna throw in for this outfit is this all white look just a tank top these like kind of floofy little boxery moments that are bedazzled and then these white pants again baggy have great movement and then a pair of white shoes so this is the final look and I think you can see kind of clearly where this outfit derives the inspiration from this one is actually my favorite from this whole video this whole concept of the collection the thing that excited me the most was the tutu element because it led me to this outfit and so I just put together menswear top like blazer tie button-up shirt the tie that I used for this look is more of a silky tie so it has a different texture than the first tie that I wore and then moving down there is a tutu and there is a pair of white kind of baggier pants and then a pair of kitten heels and when I tell you I was like jumping for joy on the roof because I was so pleased with this outfit like you can literally see the proof of me being excited I just like I'm I'm so happy to have found a way to bring this little skirt into my everyday wardrobe I've worn it for occasions and things but I never thought to pair it with a blazer and I think this blazer works specifically well with it because it is a blazer that has a double vent at the back which means that the fabric from the back of the jacket kind of like lays on top of the skirt and sort of juts out in this like fun dramatic and playful way. I also think that these shoes really work with it because they have some elements of ballet slippers, kind of. They're like a pointy black heeled ballet slipper, <laughs> which also kind of references the shoes in the collection as Jacquemus put out these sort of square toe flats ballet kind of looking shoes so this look is kind of minimally accessorized just because the silhouette is so big that kind of, you really don't need too much and then again slicked back hair because that's what all the models had so yeah that is the final outfit i'm very pleased to have done this little styling exercise I haven't been super inspired recently clothing wise so I think diving into this runway show brought me back to life in many ways and got me excited about things again and so I think that's kind of the point for me. Let me know if you picked any elements out from this runway show that you enjoy. I'm going to link some other designer based outfit videos that I've done in the past. I did a Tom Brown one that I'm super proud of that honestly I don't think enough people have seen. Anyway, I hope you look at those other videos and I hope this brought a little inspiration into your life. Yeah, I think that's everything for today. So I'll see you in the next one. Bye.